What's going on guys, unknown player here and today once again we've got some more Destiny 2 topics to cover, a lot of interesting stuff coming straight from Bungie about the big December update with some things to expect from that, also how they plan on fixing the game and addressing community concerns, there's also some more updates that Bungie have made and will be making soon and also a cool package to show you guys as well so as always a big roundup of everything happening recently worth being aware of. So firstly, let's talk about this big December update and how Bungie plans on improving the game with some things the community has been asking for. So as you know, as well as the Curse of Osiris DLC launching on the 5th of December, at the same time Season 2 is also going to go live with its own changes, also the Dawning is going to go live, but more importantly with each new season comes a huge sandbox update, which of course is going to change, fix and hopefully improve the game in quite a big way. So this patch is being called the December Update, and Bungie recently announced they're going to be detailing a lot of what to expect on Wednesday's stream, only a couple days away. So, in addition to that, the game directors and people in charge of making Destiny 2 are also going to be on stream addressing community concerns, feedback and questions. So Luke Smith, who you probably already know is the game director, and also Mark Noseworthy, the project lead. Normally they would kind of disappear and start working on Destiny 3 or September's Taken King expansion, or the next big thing for Bungie. So it's actually quite a big deal they're coming back onto the stream to talk about Destiny 2, which isn't normal for them. Normally Deej, community managers, the live team, they're the ones talking about the current game. These guys like Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy work on the next thing. So these guys are going to be coming on the stream and talking about Destiny 2 and some big changes. So Luke Smith said that on the stream they're going to be detailing the system side of the December update. So in particular, they're going to talk about the economy update, which include the following, so vendors and acquiring their gear, tokens, which of course is a very big topic, and also legendary shards, so all of those things fall under the economy. They're also going to be talking about the investment updates, which includes the new reward systems for obtaining weapons and armor. And then on top of that, there's going to be some new gameplay updates and more. So pretty much all the words I wanted to hear, and like I and a lot of people have been saying, the content isn't the main problem for Destiny 2, it's the whole back end. So the actual loot itself, the loot systems that give you that stuff, the economy, the investment. So it's definitely nice to hear Luke Smith saying all those words, which is definitely the main issue and things we'd like to see improved. And I think this December update is going to be very crucial to the game's survival because as we know, content is all good. So new shiny missions and Osiris stuff is going to be fun, but without some good investments and economy to actually grind the stuff and play it and incentives, it's not going to mean all that much. So it's definitely nice to hear all those things are on the agenda of things to talk about, more so than a new strike or a new weapon, which most of the previous streams have been focusing on. So yeah, not massively surprising. I did expect them to do something along these lines for the third stream. There's no way they could just ignore all the community feedback and concerns. And Luke said that he will be answering community questions. I'm hoping he talks about that system to make your third and tenth better devils interesting. That was something he said like five months ago, and we could really do that right now. So I think similar to when Chris Barrett did that huge list of things he wanted, I feel like this is going to be a bit similar of things the community wants to hear, but how much of these that make it into the expansion we'll have to see. So Wednesday, of course, look out for a video on this channel detailing all the changes. I'll be summarizing and breaking down everything in the update that they announced into one concise video for you guys and also showing off some new DLC gameplay you haven't seen before. So of course, stay tuned for this channel for those videos and do let me know down below in the comment section what do you think of Mark Noseworthy and Luke Smith hopping on the stream to talk about this December update. It's definitely not something you see very often with these Bungie live streams. So next up, wanted to briefly discuss something else that happened in the past few days and a game update that Bungie pushed out pretty quickly. So for a while now, we've known the XP bar, the thing at the bottom that gets you bright engrams after you hit level 20, that thing scales. So in a session, leveling up that bar is going to take progressively longer each time you level up and it's going to require more XP the more you play in a session. So that in itself isn't a surprise, we've known that since launch and it's been a common thing in most games to be honest to scale XP. But it was only recently when a lot of people on Reddit started to really crunch the numbers and figure out how harsh the scaling system was and now there's pretty much no transparency on why it actually is the way it is. I'm not going to bore you with a ton of numbers, but in a nutshell, if you play it enough, sometimes you would get as low as 5% of the XP you should be getting because of the scaling, so it can be pretty harsh like I said. It still would look like you're getting the normal amount of XP, but the bar would not reflect that. So a lot of people talk about this and pointing this out, Bungie very quickly made a blog post announcing that they removed the system entirely. I feel like it's going to come back and maybe a bit more generous and hopefully more transparent this time, but they simply took the scaling out of the game. So I've no doubt this is definitely because of the backlash that EA got for their recent Battlefront stuff. So I imagine every games publisher and company is trying to be super careful right now to avoid backlash. And this Destiny 2 thing is definitely nowhere near on the same level as the Battlefront microtransactions. But it still involves Eververse and of course real money. And it's probably why they acted so fast on it. 
Now, an important thing to note is because they took it out so quickly, they didn't have time to update the progress bar. So it still does look like it's on the old scaling system, but apparently they can't fix that until another update. So what they did initially with their hot fixer update was to remove the scaling system, and then eventually they'll try and fix the UI to match that removal of the system. Then I guess when they put it back in, they'll probably fix it as well. But that was something they announced just today, the fact the game isn't going to reflect the real XP you're getting, which apparently has been improved. So that's a quick summary of what did happen with the whole XP leveling system, if you were confused about it. I think the main issue is the fact it was never explained in or outside the game, in addition to, of course, the fact it was so harsh. But I think it's kind of inevitable the system will return, but hopefully it's a lot less strict and also is more transparent on how it works and why. But something to be aware of, definitely nonetheless. And as always, leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. So I also wanted to mention that there's a new emblem available inside Destiny 2 called The Darkest Day. This kind of a hidden emblem has been hidden for a very long time. This represents the kind of lost light or darkness icon that you see when you die or wipe. But the way to get this is by purchasing things on the Bungie store. And if you don't know, every single penny that's raised on the Bungie store goes to charity. And this is the last day to pick it up. So if you're interested, you want to get a cool emblem that's probably not going to be sold again, then this is your last chance to do so with the Black Friday sale. But something I want to let you guys know about, considering it all does go to charity. So this week, if you didn't know, is also, of course, the last Iron Banner of Season 1. So the next one, sometime in December, that is going to have the new updates that Bungie mentioned. So being able to buy stuff directly off Saladin, less emphasis on tokens, adding a bunch of missing weapons into the loot pool, and of course, a bunch of other stuff yet to be announced. The Faction Rally is going to be the same. So the next one you see is going to be updated with Season 2 loot. You don't need to worry about not participating in the recent events and not being able to get Season 1 gear in Season 2. From what Bungie said, it's still going to be available, they're just adding more ornaments, more weapons. But so when we go from Season 2 into Season 3, that is when stuff, the ornaments, is going to be exclusive and not earnable anymore. So of course I'm looking forward to see how they improve the Iron Banner, hopefully they mention it in Wednesday's stream. But these changes are definitely needed. I think this Iron Banner was probably the least hyped in Destiny history. I've seen ones in the droughts of Destiny 1 with way more people playing, a lot more of a buzz surrounding it. So I kind of miss when Iron Banner was such a big deal every single month. You'd always look forward to it, but now it definitely seems very stale. Maybe it's just the fact that we've had it for the last four years, so maybe we need something new. But I want to see how they plan on updating it with these new loot system overhauls. So next up, I've actually got a very special package to show you, and this is from the guys over at MSI who kindly offered to sponsor this video. But they sent me this laptop to review and check out, which I actually love because if you don't know, I actually bought one of these MSI laptops like four or five years ago when I was first getting into YouTube. I needed a laptop for traveling and making videos from events, so I chose to spend my own money on one of these MSI laptops all those years ago. So it's a product I use and still do right now. Anytime I'm at E3 or capture events, the videos you see on this channel are always made on that same laptop. This one you can see right here. So I'm really happy to work with MSI because I actually use their products and have been years before they approach me. So what we have today to look at is one of their GE Raider series. Of course, all the details are going to be linked down below in the description if you want to look at them. This one has a 17 inch screen. You can also, of course, get 15 inch ones. But the screen is 120 hertz, which is very important for gaming. The processor is an i7 7700 with 16 gigs of RAM. The graphics card is an NVIDIA GTX 1070 with 8 gigs of its own RAM. So of course, this thing is more than capable of running Destiny 2 or any PC game on max settings well above 60 FPS. Now, one of the main things I like about this one is the screen. I said that 120 hertz is very important. And the reason is because you can simply get a higher frame rate. So if you have a 60 hertz screen, which is what most laptops and even a lot of PC monitors still have, you can only see up to 60 FPS. But if you have a 120 hertz screen like these ones, you can see up to 120 FPS. So with a laptop this powerful, it's nice to be able to see those extra frames. So these ones, which are the GE series, are slightly bigger and beefier than the GS laptops, which is what my old one is, the one on the left there. A bit slimmer and a little bit lighter, but it does get a lot hotter and louder because, of course, that's a trade-off. But this GE one, on the other hand, is a bit bigger, so of course it's way better at cooling, allowing it to perform better. So it's definitely personal preference if you prefer it being lighter so you can carry it around and travel a lot. Or if you don't plan on moving it, then of course you can get one which has a bit of a bigger screen and of course it's going to be much quieter and not as hot. Now, two things pretty unique about this one is firstly a button to cycle through the keyboard layouts just under the power button there. So you can actually change the lighting on the keyboard. Of course, you can customize it and set it properly in the software. But by pressing this button, you can also change the lighting. Now, something even more strange is a button to actually turn on the fan, which I've never seen before on a laptop. You can just cool the thing down really quickly if you want to blast the fan with this button, which turns on. So definitely very unique as far as laptops go. 
But like I said, if you want to see the full specs, all the options and all the models, I'll put a link in the description to see all the details on MSI's website. So as always, if you enjoyed the video and want to help support the channel, then a like rating down below would be much appreciated. Stay tuned for, of course, that video on Wednesday covering everything in that December update should be pretty interesting. But in the meantime, you can click the image on screen to be taken to another Destiny 2 video I recently made with some new DLC info and, of course, gameplay in there. And I'll see you guys in the next one.